It's 1999, and Indian and Pakistani troops are exchanging gunfire across the border in the Kargil district of Kashmir. The fighting between the two nuclear-armed nations ended in a ceasefire, with hundreds dead on both sides. Prime Minister Nawaz Sharif tried to replace Army Chief General Pervez Musharraf, who was abroad. Musharraf flew back to Karachi and had Sharif arrested. Musharraf named himself Chief Executive. It was a bloodless coup. Two years later, he'd appoint himself president. But it wasn't until after the September 11th attacks that Musharraf became an American ally, joining what President Bush called the War on Terror, despite internal pressure not to side with the U.S. Musharraf supported the invasion of Afghanistan, though he later claimed the U.S. had threatened to bomb Pakistan unless it joined the fight against al-Qaeda. Maintaining relations with Washington required a fine balancing act. Musharraf deployed troops to the country's northwestern tribal areas for the first time in the nation's history. He also signed agreements with fighters there, but it failed to stop the resurgence of the Taliban and al-Qaeda. The other relationship to manage was India. After the parliament in Delhi was attacked in 2001, India sent thousands of troops to its border. Pakistan responded in kind. If any war is thrust on Pakistan, Pakistan armed forces, and the 140 million people of Pakistan are fully prepared to face all consequences with all their might. After two years of tension, Pakistan declared a ceasefire in the disputed territory of Kashmir. India agreed to the truce, and relations finally started to improve. Internally, however, Musharraf's rule was under fire. The suspension of Chief Justice Iftikhar Mohammad Chowdhury on corruption charges in March 2007 triggered massive street demonstrations by lawyers and street violence. More than 40 people were killed in clashes between pro-government gunmen and opposition supporters. Nearly four months later, the Supreme Court dismissed the charges against Chowdhury and reinstated him. The president may have survived assassination attempts, but politically he was not untouchable. And now he faced a challenge in the heart of the capital. In July 2007, he authorized an assault on what he called militants inside the Red Mosque. A week of intense fighting officially left over 100 dead. As the pressure piled up on the general, there were legal challenges against him, standing for another five-year term while still heading the army. Opposition members resigned from parliament to derail Musharraf's re-election bid. But in September, he won another five-year term. Amid speculation the Supreme Court would rule against his candidacy, Musharraf declared emergency rule, sacking many top judges and placing opposition leaders under house arrest. After being declared the winner of the presidential vote, he stepped down as army chief and lifted the state of emergency. But any outside sense of stability was shattered by the assassination of Benazir Bhutto. Her party accused some within the government circles of being linked to the killing something Musharraf ruled out. Meanwhile, the death toll kept on rising in the northwestern tribal areas among government troops and the local Taliban forces they've struggled to contain. With Pervez Musharraf now gone, there's a big question mark over Pakistan's future and the future of the so-called war on terror. In February, Pakistan went to the polls. Musharraf's fate was perhaps sealed then. With him now out of government, all thoughts are on his political legacy. What that could be will be hotly debated in the days to come. Dorsa Jabari, Al Jazeera.